Hey cool cats and lazy dogs. In today's video, I'm going to take a look at two lawn shotgun microphones. Keep it locked. Lawn shotgun microphones seem to be a lesser known and used tool than their shorter brethren, but offer a niche expertise in certain circumstances. Over the past year, I've used two different lawn shotguns in an attempt to find a microphone for location interviews in noisy environments on wide angle shots. The two microphones I tested are the Sennheiser MKH-70 and the Sennheiser MKH-8070. A quick review of the datasheets will reveal the following. The MKH-8070 sports a low bar pickup pattern, with the MKH-70 falling into the supercardioid low bar pickup. The 8070 has a wider frequency response of 45Hz to 20,000Hz, while the MKH-70 is 50Hz to 20,000Hz. The 8070 is more sensitive at 112 millivolts per pascal versus the 70 at 50 millivolts per pascal, and both have a max SPL of 124 decibels. Weight and dimensions wise, the 8070 is the longer of the two, coming in at just over 18 inches versus the MK870 at 16 inches. The 8070 weighs a hefty 11.7 ounces, while the MK870 is just under 6.5 ounces. But how do these specs translate in the field? The weight of the 8070 is very apparent and will make finding an adequate mount difficult. For outdoor interviews, a blimp is going to be necessary, further adding to the weight. Due to the length of the interference tube and the limited space after the capsule, a wind softy or foam can't effectively be used, because the center of gravity will be too far back for most shock mounts. When balanced inside of a blimp, many shock mounts and quick mounts will be underbuilt and become unstable under the weight. Booming for even short interviews, the blimp mic combo feels like a bodybuilding competition, making it difficult to stay on point, which is made even more difficult with the narrow pickup. The MKH-70, on the other hand, has a shorter interference tube allowing for easier mating with a softy and lightweight shock mount, thus not necessitating a blimp all of the time. Its lighter weight makes it much easier to stay on target without fatigue, and its wider pickup is more forgiving for those lawn interviews. The 8070 is superb at capturing audio dialogue at a distance. Its high boost really helps the dialogue stand out from the surrounding noises. The MKH-70, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have the same reach or dialogue pull as the 8070. The high boost on the MKH-70 will make it sound less muffled. Next up are some tests that I conducted with the microphones, as well as some examples in the field at a couple of air shows last year. Right now, I am about 5 feet away from the microphone capsules for this distance test. The Sennheiser MKH-70 is on my left, and the Sennheiser MKH-8070 is on my right. They are pointed directly at me, and I'm speaking at a moderate voice. As far as ambient sound go, you have traffic in the back, you've got birds all around, and there's a plane buzzing around up ahead. I am now about 10 feet away from the microphone capsules. Again, the MK870 is on my left, and the 8070 is on my right, and the microphones are pointed straight at me. I am now about 15 feet away from the microphone capsules, with the 70 on my left, and the 8070 on my right. Microphones are pointed straight at me, I'm speaking at a moderate voice, and for ambience, we have uh, a lot of crows buzzing around, as well as some other small songbirds. I am now about 20 feet away from the microphone capsules, with the MKH-70 on my left and the 8070 on my right. I'm speaking at a moderate voice, and the microphones are pointed straight at me. I am now approximately 25 feet away in this distance test of these long shotgun microphones. They are pointed straight at me, and I'm speaking at a moderate voice. I am now about 30 feet away in this distance test of these long shotgun microphones. Again, the 70 is on my left, and the 8070 is on my right. They are pointed straight at me, and I'm speaking at a moderate voice. I am now about 35 feet away from the long shotgun microphones in this distance test. The Sennheiser MKH-70 is on my left, and the Sennheiser uh, MKH-8070 is on my right. They're pointed straight at me, and I'm speaking at a moderate voice. Uh, for ambience, we have some traffic behind the microphones. Up ahead, and we also have uh, some songbirds and crows all around. So, right now, I'm about five feet away from these microphone capsules of this distance test of these two long shotgun microphones, being the MKH70 on my left and the 8070 on my right. But this time, I've increased the outdoor noise. I've got some random talk show on the radio immediately to the left of the microphones, probably about five feet to the left. And then I've got a diesel truck idling probably about 10 feet to the right of these microphones. Behind the mics, we have a road and we've got a bunch of birds buzzing around. So again, we'll see how well these microphones do at pulling my voice out from the ambient surrounding. 
now I am about 10 feet away from the microphone capsules in this distance test of the MK8070 and the 8070 with increased sound all around. We got a radio on the left, diesel truck at the right, and traffic behind. Let's move on 15 feet. Now I am about 15 feet away from the microphone capsules. 70 on my left, 8070 on my right, radio on the left, from 5 feet away. So I'm now about a foot and a half away from the microphone capsules. Uh, they are at the ground, pointed about 45 degrees upwards to my chest. I have the MK870 on my left and the MKH8070 on my right. And I have a radio with a talk show about five feet to my left. And I've got a diesel truck idling about 10 feet to my right. So let's see how well these do at pulling my voice out in an interview scenario outdoors with plenty of ambient sound. So I am now uh, about three feet away from the microphone capsules, but this time the microphones are angled at about 45 degree angle downwards up to my chest right about here. And this is with increased sound all around. We've got a diesel truck idling uh, somewhere about probably around 12 feet to the right. And we have a random talk show about five feet uh, to my left. So we'll see how well these microphones do at pulling my voice out from the ambience. I'm speaking at a moderate voice. We're outdoors and the microphones are about 45 degree angle from the ground pointed up towards my chest. Right now, I am about five feet away from the microphone capsules. I have the MKH70 on my left on channel two and the MKH8070 on my right on channel one. I'm speaking at a moderate voice and the microphones are uh, downwards facing upwards at about a 45 degree angle to my chest. So let's see how well these do at polling dialogue from a normal interview scenario outdoors. I am now about three feet away from the microphone capsules with the MK870 on my left and the 8070 on my right. They are downwards facing upwards at about a 45 degree angle to my chest. And let's see how well these pull my dialogue, which is at a moderate voice for an outdoor setting. I am now about a foot and a half away from the microphone capsules with the MK870 on my left and the 8070 on my right. Speaking at a moderate voice, they are downwards facing upwards at about a 45 degree angle to my chest. Again, let's see how well these microphones do at pulling my voice out for an outdoor interview scenario. So now the microphones are upwards, pointed downwards to my chest, eh, probably about a 15 degree angle. A lot of ambient sound. I'm about a foot and a half away from them. We've got a radio about five feet to my left, diesel truck about 10 to 12 feet to my right. And again, I'm speaking a moderate voice outdoors. Plenty of ambient sound. We'll see how well the 70 on my left and the 8070 on my right do at pulling my voice out from the noise. So I am now slightly farther from the microphones at approximately five feet with the 70 on my left, 8070 on my right. They are upwards pointed downwards at about 15 degree angle towards my chest. I've got a radio about five feet to my left, diesel truck about 10 to 15 feet to my right. Roadway behind, I'm speaking at a moderate voice. And uh, yeah, see how well these microphones do. Launch shotgun distance test for uh, dialogue capture. I am now about five feet away from the microphone capsules. They are upwards, pointed downwards to my chest by about 15 degrees. And we just have normal ambient sound, such as crows and some traffic in the background. The 70 is on my left and the 8070 is on my right. I am now about three feet away from the microphone capsules and they are upwards, pointed downwards about 15 degrees. And we'll see how well these microphones do at pulling dialogue for an outdoor interview. I am approximately a foot and a half from the microphone capsules with the MK870 on my left and the 8070 on my right. Uh, we just have normal ambient sound right now. Uh, the microphones are upwards, angled downwards, uh, about 15 degrees towards my chest. And we'll see how well these two microphones do for pulling dialogue in an outdoor interview. So I have the Sennheiser MKH 8070 and the Sennheiser MKH 70 about five to six feet from me. And they're about 10 inches off the ground and they're facing me upwards 
then I've got all the traffic behind me. So this will hopefully give a good idea as far as how well these isolate the human voice in comparison to the background noise and whether or not they're suitable for a wide angle type of scenario. Uh, just to reiterate on some of this, I'm just going to do a little bit of an excerpt on the Laser Agent Pro by Thomas Mackley. Uh, we'll see how this works. Their van will be upon us before the bridge goes down. And if they once may win the bridge, what hope to save the town? Then out spake brave Horatius, the captain of the gate. To every man upon this earth, death cometh soon or late. And how can a man die better than facing fearful odds in the ashes of his fathers and the temple of his gods? So I'm now facing the opposite direction to see how the microphones perform with the rear of the microphone facing the majority of the distracting ambient noise and the interviewee on the other side. Again, we're going to be reading a bit from the Lace Page of Rome. And out spake strong Herminius, of Titian blood was he. I will abide on thy left side, and keep the bridge with thee. Horatius, quoth the council, as thou saith, so let it be. And straight against the great array, forth went the Dauntless Three. So I am now in a moderately sized garage to test how well these two launch shotgun microphones handle reflections in a less than ideal setting for dialogue. I've got a concrete floor below me, uh, hard ceiling, hard objects and metal objects all around, and a garage door immediately behind me. I have the MKH-70 on my left and the MKH-8070 on my right. And again, this is a test of these two launch shotgun microphones for uh, indoor dialogue in a reverberant setting. I'm just gonna have a quick excerpt from the sales pitch on the Devil in the White City um, to test some of this out even further. Bringing Chicago circa 1893 to vivid life, Eric Larson's spellbinding bestseller interwines the true tale of two men, the brilliant architect behind the legendary 1893 World's Fair, striving to secure America's place in the world, and the cunning serial killer who used the fair to lure his victims to their death. Combining meticulous research with nail-biting storytelling, Eric Larson has crafted a narrative with all of the wonder of newly discovered history and the thrills of the best fiction. Again, this is a test of the MKH-70 and the MKH-8070 uh, launch shotgun microphones for dialogue in a reverberant garage setting. In, in my particular case, I've always dreamt of flying. As a child, I would have dreams in the middle of the night that I would try to replicate and rarely did that I could actually fly. Aerox is participating in the Sun and Fun promotion uh, where if you fly in, you get a free gift. So if you've flown into the show, stop by the booth and we'll get you one of these cool Aerox mugs that say it's toxic to be hypoxic. And uh, we're figuring out the amount of water quantity in the snowpack and the National Weather Service uses that for uh, flood predictions when the snow melts. That's one of the missions. Kenneth, you got any more? Yeah, so we also fly a lot in Southeast Alaska and Northern Alaska. It's just too big. It took a military to operate these things. So as an individual person, it's almost an impossible task, but it's not undoable. These little tabs, they lower stall speed and improve control response at slow speeds. It fits in with EAA's larger goals and plans for the future. Yeah, so as an organization, we realize that all of our partners really need more people. The charged uh, engine will give us a good uh, power up to 15,000 feet. Um, up to 180 knots true airspeed. And they'll also pair with our DFC-90 autopilot as well. And this is our IFD-550. Seaplane base is a hidden gem. It's, uh, it's a super very family friendly. It's a little quieter. You come down here, relax. Doesn't have quite the hustle and bustle of the big field, but uh, it's a beautiful scenery and a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm privileged to be able to fly a number of the different factory models of airplanes. Uh, I've been coming to the seaplane base for now 15 years. I've been coming to Air Venture for well over 20 years. When I, uh, I had 25 years old, every time I flew, it was uh, a dream. Now it's kind of normal. You are used to that. Share information and share parts and do whatever it takes to keep everybody in the air so we can show up for the show on time where the people can enjoy what we brought. Yeah, and the other, the other difference is it's, it's quite a different experience to get to see one fly, make noise, than just seeing one in a museum. The uh, only electric aircraft uh, for commercial sale in the world, uh, the Velis Electro by Pipistrel Company. Still, that's nothing like taking a, a flight on an old aircraft where you actually experience everything that you, you can't duplicate it. I have also noticed that the MK870 works better with the automatic gain and automatic limiters on cameras, such as the Canon XF705 and the Canon C200. The MKH8070, which I'm assuming is because of its higher sensitivity, caused the automatic gain and the automatic limiters on these cameras to jump around a lot, 
resulting in a very uneven audio signal. Ultimately, for capturing dialogue on location in noisy environments and during wide-angle shots, the MKH-70 is an easier and more effective tool for me to use. It's less sensitive to noises directly behind the interviewees, it is lighter weight and easier to find accessories for it. The 8070, though a wonderful microphone, seems like it would be better suited for a locked off shot, where the microphone is semi-permanently mounted somewhere for either sound effects and Foley production, or isolating very distinct sounds in large environments at a great distance. These have been my observations after using the MKH-70 and the 8070 in the field over the past year, and I'm excited to learn more about the practical application of long shotgun microphones for location dialogue. If you're familiar with long shotgun microphones, feel free to comment below with any tips or tricks about how to best use them. Until next time, this is Alexander Calder Spinelli of Lawn Boom Media, signing off. Catch you later, cool cats.